The chart to my right represents three particular childhood cancers which are very tough to treat. And these are pediatric solid cancers or pediatric solid tumors. We are looking at basically the three uh, rhabdomyosarcoma. We are looking at osteosarcoma and we are looking at glioblastoma multiform. Now, what is interesting is this. This is dose dependent effect of two plant compounds, which are normally seen as being waste products. In particular, soy molasses and kudzu root. Kudzu, kudzu, depends how you like to pronounce it. And that is the effect. And it is dramatic. And especially in these particular types of pediatric solid cancers, which are very difficult to treat. Does that mean it also works in basically adult scenarios? Possibly so. Now keep in mind, this is in vitro, this particular study. In vitro, for those not familiar, meaning it is not done in any living organisms. This is a pilot study and dosages are not discussed because this is just the beginning of the research itself. So with that in mind, let us proceed to get right into it. And here we go. Kudzu roots and soy molasses may help treat three types of cancer, especially in kids. And kind of an anticlimactic uh, tagline, scientists have found anti-cancer substances in them. To proceed, the isoflavones in soy molasses and kudzu roots are phytoestrogens that mimic the action of the human hormone estrogen. I know that's gonna tag some flags there, but keep in mind, phytoestrogens, estrogens, we're not talking like estrone or other uh, harmful estrogen metabolites, we're talking plant-based estrogens, so it can have a different type of dynamic. In this case, we're looking at the outcome in regard to pediatric solid cancers. To proceed, they help to bind or remove free radicals from the body, which cause cell damage and disrupt immune system functions. This in turn leads to various diseases, including the formation of cancerous tumors. Now, it's interesting when you think about it, to remove free radicals from the body as opposed to being an electric or electron donor, like an antioxidant per se, and neutralizing free radicals. So yeah, they both uh, are different roads, the same house, but totally different roads to proceed. Isoflavones found in plants are effective against dense tumor structures affecting human internal organs. For example, soy extract is most effective against metastasis and malignant tumor cells developing in muscles, particular uh, rhabdomyosarcoma, with isoflavones from kudzu roots showing good anti-carcinogenic effects against brain cancer, glioblastoma multiform and bone and connective tissue cancer as osteosarcoma. Studies were performed in vitro, not a living organism, basically just taking the cell lines, putting in a Petri dish, adding basically the soy molasses compound or kudzu root compound and seeing what happens. And on the cell lines of these diseases, the cancer studied or the cancer studied have a high degree of metastasis and are resistant to therapeutic uh, regimens. They are explain, explain, especially dangerous for children. About 40% of cancers in children are from these types of cancer. Chemotherapy and radiotherapy help in only 50% of the cases in which the other 50% of the cancer cells continue to metastasize and in children's bodies, the cells grow faster than in adults. In addition, radiation therapy is very toxic, especially for children. Thus, there is a need to develop innovative strategies that can potentially inhibit the growth of tumor cells without side effects. So plant extracts are an alternative to a traditional drug therapy, quoting the researcher. Now, again, you hear the word alternative. This is a pilot study. It is done in vitro, so it needs to be explored more. However, just the same, this is the beginning. We're seeing that these plant compounds from kudzu and soy molasses, soy molasses is such a waste product that's usually given to animals for animal feed and pellets and things like that. But 
is something so common can have such a profound effect, especially dose dependent effect in regard to difficult to treat uh, pediatric solid cancers or tumors, just by having the impact of removing the free radicals uh, in reference to the body itself, which are impeding uh, the ability for the body to take care of these tumors. That's pretty amazing. And remember too, look at the graph in the beginning and you saw the dose dependent effect on how effective these compounds, especially kudzo, in basically neutralizing or mitigating uh, in, uh, I mar parse my words carefully, in these cell lines or cell cultures so effectively. Uh, but again, it is in vitro. So I know it has an impact. Now we have to see if it has an impact in a living biological organism to proceed. A couple of notes too, before we also go a little further, which are real important on the highlights. Basically, as you see right here, in dispensables, we talk about soy molasses and parts of the kudzu are regarded as waste in the manufacturing process. Hence, they need to be recycled and repurposed. So here you could have a medication which can have an incredible impact on very difficult to treat tumors, meaning relatively inexpensive, inavailable, and potentially very, very helpful. Second note we want to look at is kudzu root and soy molasses extremely substantially decrease the viability of tumor cells even at lowest concentrations. That is promising. Look at that chart once again. Again, this chart's a little different than the chart we showed up front, primarily by uh, the lead in paragraph. As you can see right there, at the lowest concentrations, it seems to have a pretty effective impact on these particular cell lines. Also too, worthy of note, is part of the extraction method. Because the technology has shown to be more effective for isoflavonoid extraction than the synthetic method of obtaining them. It should be noted that choline chloride and citric acid also have their own therapeutic properties and thus can enhance the effect of isoflavones on cancer cells. That was an important add-in uh, in reference to basically uh, these particular compounds because again, for future research or researchers that want to magnify the effects or the impact of these particular compounds, choline chloride, citric acid. Interesting. All right, now to the conclusion. And we'll look at the here, we're gonna to go to the full study, which of course, as always, I'll have the links for you. To proceed, kudzu root and soy molasses are potential phytochemicals and food sources and demonstrate significant potential to be developed as pharmaceutical interventions against pediatric solid cancer cell lines, particularly against um, rhabdomyosarcoma, tumor cells in dose dependent manner. However, kudzu root, Kudzo, I want to say kudzo, kudzo root, showed a significant anti-proliferative proliferative effect against the growth of glioblastoma multiform and osteosarcoma tumor cells compared with soy molasses. So I guess if you had to choose, 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 choose between the two, kudzu root would be your choice if that option had to occur. To proceed, overall, the presence of high isoflavone Isoflavone content may act synergistically to demonstrate an anti-proliferative proliferative effect and induce antioxidative stress against tumor cells, thereby preventing further metastatic complications. That is again, just simply amazing. Can you imagine something so available and so readily available on top of that something that we're literally disposing of as a waste product can potentially yield even at its lowest concentrations such benefit especially in the most vulnerable vulnerable it's late please forgive me segments of our population children in which a lot of the chemotherapy and radio uh, the radiation therapy are so um how to say uh, reactive in a developing body. And if that treatment can possibly be toned down or reduced, giving the children a better option of recovery, as opposed to just recovering from that, as opposed to the, uh, the tumors themselves, 
as opposed to recovering from the treatment, just by adding a little bit of kudzu root or soy molasses and yielding an incredible effect as such, that is again the research that we love to see that has a wonderful, wonderful impact of basically alleviating or mitigating these possible, or I should say are, extremely, extremely tragic ailments that inflict so, so many, especially the most vulnerable and innocent of our population itself. Again, great, and I should always gratitude to the research uh, for basically delving into this. Remember, someone has to have the question, and then basically once they have the question, uh, they start to search for the answer. Isn't that what Einstein said? Is, is usually in some way, the question is even more important often than the answer, if you don't have the questions to ask. They saw a problem, they had a question, and they sought to answer it, and now they're on that path of discovery. And hopefully this pans out to be something great. Again, I am humbled that you watch. Please forgive the lighting, like changing locations, and of course a little bit of echo, so you can tell the rooms are a little empty, but still it's just the same production value, very inexpensive. So even then, I am more humbled and grateful that you watch. And I'll see you all next time. Ralph signing off. And thank you, thank you, thank you. The OI citation will be down there for you. And I look forward to seeing you all once again next week. Catch you then. Bye.